Hello, everybody, and welcome back into the Mythica. I am your host, Jocelyn Starfeather, and I am thrilled to be here with Titania Dahlin. Welcome, Titania. Thank you so much for being a part of this event. Oh, my goodness. I am so happy to be a part of your summit, Jocelyn. I just really respect your work, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I respect your work so much too and can't wait to dive into this conversation with you. So everybody, welcome, welcome in. We're so glad that you've joined us live here. Go ahead in the chat here on Zoom and put your name and location in the comments so we can welcome you all. And meanwhile, I'm gonna go live on YouTube. And so just bear with me a moment while I get that all set up. Okay, great. So we're live on YouTube. Hello, everybody out there on YouTube as well. We have Titania Dahlin with us. We're going to get started in just a moment. And so over there on YouTube, please put your name and location into the YouTube chat so we can say hi to you over there as well. And welcome, Erhard. Welcome, Nancy in Colorado. Welcome, Janaki from the Netherlands. Welcome, Tanya in the UK. Pamela in Texas, Lauren Rose in Paris, welcome Magda in Amsterdam, Esther in the UK, Ellie in the UK. Wow, welcome everybody. So beautiful to gather with you from all around the world. Okay, well, Titania, again, I'm just honored to be here with you. Thank you so much. Mm, for part ditto. Of this. <laughs> yes, Jocelyn. <laughs> and I'm going to share your bio with everybody just to introduce you for those who may not know you. So Titania Monique Dahlin has grown up knowing firsthand about the language of energy as it was handed down from her mother, energy medicine pioneer, Donna Eden. A true Renaissance woman, she is an advanced energy medicine practitioner, a Waldorf teacher, a professional storyteller and actress, a visionary artist, a professional Middle Eastern dancer and ceremonial priestess. As an energetic expression, she also created one woman shows celebrating the goddess in her many different aspects. Oh, I love that. Titania has been leading empowering women's healing retreats worldwide through energy medicine, the five elements and sacred movement with sacred ceremony for the last 25 years. As a professional dancer, she merged her mother's modality with healing movement and music to create energy medicine dance since 1996. As one of the leading life color aura experts in the world, Titania reads the vibrational energy for hundreds of clients, guiding them on their life's journey. Life colors reflect the lessons, challenges, spiritual path and relationships throughout one's lifetime. Titania is a proud mama of a wild child who is growing up with the magic of energy medicine. Titania's own challenging childhood journey led her to create energy medicine for kids. She teaches simple energy tools to empower kids and their families to live a more joyful and healthy lifestyle. Titania has a whole series of energy magic for kids books and an energy medicine magic for kids online course coming out soon. And you can learn more about her work at energymedicinewoman.com. So Titania, your topic for today is awaken the divine healer within. Mm -hmm. So could you begin by explaining um, to us, for anyone who may not know, what is energy medicine? All right. Well, energy medicine is a very big field, and I think a lot of people are using it in the ways of healing today. But I'm going to explain to you what Eden energy medicine is all about, because my mother was one of the very first pioneers in energy medicine. In the 1970s, she was coining the term energy medicine when no one else was. She probably should have uh, copywritten it, but she's not that kind of person. Anyways, way back when in the uh, early 70s, she realized that she had multiple, multiple sclerosis and the doctors had given up on her and she needed to go and find some place to help her that was not the Western medical system. And she had always has had a little bit of a gift for sight, seeing energy. And so one day she was just in her home and she needed to do something because the doctors told her to 
make her affairs in order and she had two little girls to look after but maybe she wasn't going to be around and so she got a little bit scared but in her intuition in this place that she was in she began to take her hands rub them together and put her hands on her legs and in that moment she realized that her hands had energy coming off of them and when she put one hand at the bottom of her leg one hand at the top she realized that there was an energy current going between the two hands she said what is this I, I don't even understand what is going on with my own body and so she went to a place called touch for health early signs of kinesiology and in that way she learned a language of energy and she was in the, one of the very first uh classes in energy uh in touch for health and from there she began growing and growing it excuse me oh <gasps> I'm up here at 8,000 feet and it can get really dry. No way. <laughs> and she began learning the language of energy. And then from there, she started tuning into her own intuition and began to realize that a lot of these uh the ways that she was working with the energy were from ancient ways, ancient China, ancient Japan, uh, the Native American ways, Celtic ways, Egypt, Tibet, and began to realize that she was tuning in to these ancient ways of these ancient peoples and realizing that it was working, that she was really helping her own multiple sclerosis and and she wasn't in a wheelchair anymore she wasn't in bed she was getting more energy in her body then she realized that there was nine energy systems that the body follows and within these energy systems and some of them your audience may know of meridians and aura and chakras those are some of those that are very um much more in the mainstream but there are other uh, energy systems that when you balance the whole body, then, then that's body, mind and spirit and not just one organ. If an organ is diseased, many times in the Western medicine, they just look at the organ and not the whole body. Energy medicine addresses that organ and then they address all the rest of the systems because the whole body has to balance. But they also in energy medicine we begin to understand and have a relationship with our body we begin to trust our body it is very much a relationship and so in that relationship that we have with our body we begin to heal we begin to have much more of a vital energetic life even as we grow older and so many times diseases that maybe the Western medicine says there is no cure for, wow, energy medicine, if, if you are able to find that relationship with the body, then all sorts of miracles can happen because you are listening, you are in tune with your body, and that's how it's supposed to be. The ancients always were in tune with their body, and my cat is here <laughs> wanting attention. <laughs> They were always in tune with their body and always in tune with the earth itself. We also have very much a connection with the earth. And so many times in life, we are not so tuned in with the earth. And there's a whole history um, that we have gone through where we have been separated from both body and nature itself and so i think in this day and age it is about stepping into our empowerment and knowing that we can trust our body that we can listen to our body rather than giving up that uh, knowledge and that intuition to a doctor and many times those doctors are saying oh it's all in your head you have a phantom pain it'll just go away and yet you know you know that there's something wrong with your body and yet that sometimes in the western medicine they aren't aren't finding out about uh those places and in energy medicine it is about really working with your own body's energies in order to come back to a healing and a wholeness 
I hope I answered that right. It's a huge, big subject. <laughs> it is a big subject. It really is. And I'll share just a quick personal note that when I, uh, when I was having my spiritual awakening, actually, in this was in like 2009, 2010, after the birth of my first daughter, I was looking for what am I missing? What, what I, I realized that I, my life was not on track with my soul purpose mm -hmm. and I needed to change everything and I didn't know where to go. And I, I started feeling not very well, you know, and I really went into a dark night of the soul and I found Eden energy medicine and it really pulled me out of that dark night. And it really wow. helped me to connect with my body's own healing abilities and my intuition on so many levels. So it's extremely powerful, the work that you and beautiful. And I love doing. that. I love that you found it, Eden Energy Medicine. Yeah, yeah, I had two near death experiences and it helped me stay alive. It was pretty, pretty powerful. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. So I know you say that everyone is a natural healer, that we all have this ability within to heal ourselves. So can you tell us a little bit more about that and how we can access that? Yes. So we have healing within our body. Our bodies do not want us to be in pain. Our bodies are designed to heal it the body is when an illness or a pain comes into our body it is the body's messages coming forth to say hey pay attention pay attention to me just a moment <laughs> I also was really sick last week with COVID. So I'm coming over that too. So my mouth can get really dry. I'm so glad you're, I'm so glad you're feeling better too. Thank you. I'm so happy that I got COVID. I, I feel like my immune system got up leveled. I feel like the whole world at some point is going to get a variant of this virus. And I think it is about pulling us up uplifting our immune system and moving us forward into the future. And I think it's a good thing and bless those who have gone through COVID and, and passed over to the other side. But it is really about uplifting us all in order to survive on this planet. Okay. I wow, just I kind of came. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I, I really do. I And I hope that nobody goes through it as intense. I feel like I had a mild case through about 48 hours and I'm still still uh, kind of coming off of it but I do feel like something shifted in my own in my own body I, I do not want to say that you know ever since the 80s my mother has been saying uh, we need to evolve our planet we need to evolve our energy systems and I think it is now it is now that we are needing to do this and this is about our inner healer as well like I said our bodies are designed to heal itself and so when we find those messages that those body that our bodies are saying to us when we find out what that message is and it's individual for every single person then we can come to that solution and then we come to the healing and i think it is our our health is our greatest birthright and if we work with it it is amazing so our bodies are electromagnetic our hands have this amazing magical powerful energy that every single one of us has the ability to heal with our hands with our heart um, another person or ourself i believe when we connect in with our own bodies and our energy systems it is a form of self-love it is a form of a relationship to ourself and we are all needing to connect to the place of self-love within ourselves because we are all stepping into more empowerment in our day and age our world is changing we are shifting in such a fast way and our bodies also need to get on board there is is a little bit of a um, kind of a, a screwy kind of energy going on and our bodies are trying to figure out how how we can survive through this time and so I just I believe that um, it is about taking our power back I think in some of those ancient cultures especially 
in those places of the Inquisition, when, when before the Inquisition, oh, every single village, the hub of the village was the healer, the midwife, the herbologist, and maybe even the entertainer, because the entertainer brought about life and, and laughter. But the healer itself, the, the healer, every single culture knew that connecting to the earth and connecting to the cycles of the earth, connecting to the different seasons was so important. They really honored the uh, birthing of the seed, what happens underneath the soil, the blooming of that fruit or vegetation, the harvest, and then the dying time. And they really honored this. And with every season, they ate the fruits and vegetables within the season rather than having um, in your grocery store, having fruits and vegetables in a different season. They're very much connected to the earth, but very in tune to themselves. And so um, one of the things that was so interesting um, when I came across this was in the 1500s, um, you know, in every single plague that came about in history, we had an up leveling, we had a shifting of the energy on the planet and, and we are in one right now. And in the 1500s, one of the one of the great plagues that came about was syphilis. Now syphilis began to change everything. It was a disease of sexuality. So of course the church got to put their hands into it and realized that hmm, perhaps the body is impure. Perhaps the sacred sexuality is something that we need to separate people. We need to separate them. We need to separate the body. And also all those different kinds of celebrations that they're doing in the woods to consecrate the fertility of the land. Well, let's get away with that too and create nature as as a dangerous kind of thing. And so they, even in paintings, they began to paint nature as a demon and the body as impure. And so they did away with all those ancient kinds of celebrations. And then the Inquisition came about as well. Well, the syphilis also brought in, uh, what was it? Mercury and silver. So silver was part of the revolution of the chemical chemical medicine that was born. And so all of a sudden the inquisition came about and all of a sudden people started going into hiding and maybe it was passed down in hiding the different kinds of celebrations and the connections as healing, but they even put a ban on herbs in that time. And so then the medical industry came about and then the patriarchy came about, which we all know, and, and male doctors became uh, in the roles of the midwives. And so even females weren't helping women birth um, this amazing honoring place. And then of course our cycles, our cycles became gross, the bleed time became gross and not honored and 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 everything began to change and then that that voice of the woman that intuitive knowledge of where we were so connected to our bodies were now put put in our place we were veiled we were we were hid away and so i believe that sometimes that time of of all of a sudden putting our trust into doctors and not ourself, not knowing that we also have an awareness, a trust inside our own bodies in order to heal ourselves and not being able to work with a doctor. Sometimes when you find a doctor that's so beautiful that you can work with your own your own knowledge about your own body, then that's great. But when the doctor says, oh, this is what you have and you just are uh, in that way, just, just trusting the doctor, sometimes that doesn't bring about all of your healing. And yet we also have to have this fine line between Western medicine and our complementary medicines in the world because 
sometimes it does need to have surgery for a certain organ that has been so diseased that the body cannot handle it anymore. So you cut out that organ, but sometimes nine out of 10, that disease will come back in a different way if you haven't dealt with that organ before. So one of those examples could be uh, gallbladder. If your gallbladder is removed, then yes, it's all about the food that you've ingested. But one of the main emotions to the gallbladder is anger. And how are you dealing with anger in your life? Is it healthy or is it something that causes you stress when anger comes out? And this is something I had to deal with when my gallbladder came out. And I knew, wow, if I didn't deal with my anger in healthy ways, it's going to show itself in a different part of the body. And so just cutting out an organ is beneficial. But if you're not dealing with the message that your body is telling you, then, then it could come back in a different way. So we all have this amazing healer within us and it is powerful, but we need to trust it. We need to trust our intuition. And I think some of those old uh, cultures have uh, taken that away from us, that power. Mm. So sorry about my dry mouth. It's, it's from those symptoms of COVID last year, last week. <laughs> so I don't know if I've answered that, but um, that's a, it's, it's also, we, we do have that amazing inner healer within us. And if we have that relationship within our body to connect, then, then it does some amazing things. And I have been witness in my lifetime for listening to the body, body's messages and healing in some amazing ways. Even in my near death experiences, I healed because I found the message, the message of what my body was trying to tell me. Yeah, it's, this is such an important part of the shift that we need to make right now, right? Away from relying on doctors or, you know, who, whoever, scientists, whoever we just deem the professionals to have all the answers. And the thing is that they do have some really good answers, as you're saying. We were talking to Dr. Azra Bertrand earlier today, and he was sharing about, you know, as a doctor, but also an energy healer and a practice practitioner of magic, you know, he yeah. has this really unique perspective. And he was saying that, you know, as a doctor, he was seeing some cancer patients that would have a spontaneous remission and it's a miraculous healing. Mm -hmm. And the other doctors who were just so completely, completely science-based would say, well, that's not possible. It didn't happen, even though they had the proof right in front of them. So it's interesting, this paradigm shift that we need to make to, you know, utilize our technology for the value that it does bring. And for, you know, like surgery, when we need surgery, cancer treatments, when we really need that, but yes. also bringing in this other perspective of realizing that our body is, it, it is meant to be its own healer. Right. And it yes. has so much more power and and our belief in that makes a difference mm, for sure for sure i i remember my my father and my grandfather putting so much faith into their doctors their doctors were terrible <laughs> and, and i kept you know so my my father was very conservative my mother on the other hand with energy medicine growing up in a more alternative family i had the best of both worlds. It was a balance. But my father was constantly uh, really putting his faith into doctors and and not um, basically on in the last few months of his life, he finally came to my mother and said, could you do something? But it was far too late because he had followed doctors his whole life. And it, and it made me so sad because we need to put our faith really within ourselves and work with our doctors find a good doctor that you can work with so that that they are hearing what is going on in your body and not saying oh that's just a phantom pain i have uh, this inside my body i have what doctors have deemed a phantom pain since 10 years ago when I had my near-death experiences. Nobody could find it. Nobody could, could um, pinpoint what is going on. They said that it would just 
just disappear one day. Well, it hasn't over 10 years. And, and so I work it with it with energy medicine, still trying to find that message from what this phantom pain is trying to tell me. But um, it is, it is interesting how many people do put their faith into the medical history, medical industry. And right now I feel like so many people are needing to find more of a dependence on the healthcare system and cut the cost of medicine because we're skyrocketing here in especially our country of America. It's it's just crazy. And so we need to find an alternative. And I think that alternative, that complementary medicine is working with our self. Um, another um, story that I have is my near-death experiences. So for, so I had 15 years of fertility struggles and many surgeries um, coming up to that place of a death store. And um, when I finally came up to death store was because I put my faith into a fertility doctor. Uh, at the age of 43, I got really scared. Uh, my sister had just gotten pregnant at the age of 40. It was wonderful. And first time, because she wasn't trying, and that's usually what happens when, when you don't try, usually you get pregnant. Well, my whole life was centered around uh, ritual and getting pregnant and complementary medicine to help me get pregnant and working with myself. Well, it never happened. And I was also a Middle Eastern dancer helping women get pregnant through Middle Eastern dance. And they would all get pregnant in my classes. And yet when I started um, trying to get pregnant, it wasn't happening. It was huge for me because it was my whole job was wrapped up in that and wanting to birth babies into the world as a sacred uh, birthing ritual, basically. Anyways, I finally said, okay, at the age of 43, when my sister was uh, pregnant, okay, I have to do something different. Now, all my life, I've been natural because my mother, Donna Eden, we, I grew up in energy. I, I hardly ever take an aspirin, and that's about it. I take a lot of supplements, a lot of herbs, but no medications. And then all of a sudden, I went to a fertility doctor female fertility doctor. I was so happy. I found somebody who was going to work with me. And then all of a sudden, I just put my faith into her. And so I went in and the first round of fertil uh, IVF, I got really, really sick. They said, oh, just take an ibuprofen. You'll be fine. Second round of IVF, I basically was being ambulanced to the first hospital and and I told them, oh, just call up my fertility doctor. She'll know everything that's happening. She denied everything and said, oh, has nothing to do with us, has nothing to do with the fertility. Um, she has something else going on. And they almost took my appendix out. And then in the next two weeks, I went through six hospitals. I knew that my eggs were bursting inside. It hurt so bad. And what I didn't realize was I was heading towards death's door and establishing blood clots all over my body, both arms, both legs, four pass through my heart and, and my lungs. And I'm so amazed that I'm here today. And anyways, by the seventh hospital, I was ba basically being airlifted from my home here in the mountains of California and heading towards Pasadena because we kept saying, check with my fertility doctor. And she kept saying, denying it. And it's the only thing in my history that was changed was IVF. And all of a sudden there was a freak fog storm in Pasadena, which usually doesn't happen. And the helicopter turned around and went to Palm Springs. And there I, I arrived and the doctor said, you, she's not making it through the night. And my mother said, oh yes, she is. And so energy medicine helped me get back to where I was. But in three years time, I never established my energy back, my vitality. I was in wheelchair. I couldn't come up to my 8,000 feet home. It was, it was terrible. And then at the end of those three years, the doctors came to me and said, we have to take your uterus out, which was the death 
the death of me because I knew I wouldn't be able to get pregnant. And I couldn't say the word hysterectomy because I knew that hysterectomy was what they gave women when they were a little bit too uh, crazy and their mood swings and they wanted to subdue women. So of course I wasn't going to get a hysterectomy. I, I pushed them back for three years. And then finally at that, that second near death experience, I had to realize that my body was saying, it's not going to happen for you. You're not going to get pregnant this way. You've tried and tried and tried and your uterus, which was bleeding and bleeding and the doctors couldn't control the blood. And I had blood clots all over my body. So it was a double edged sword. The doctors couldn't do anything. And my uterus was crying out for my attention and saying, you got to surrender. You got to surrender. And then when I did and I said, OK, there must be a greater plan for me. It must be a universal plan. And I surrendered. I thanked her. I thanked my uterus. I did a whole ceremony around her. And then all of a sudden after that, I immediately started getting well. And I realized I said to my mom, but mom, they took my uterus out. But I feel like there's a uterus inside me, this mm. spirit uterus, which I call it now, that is pure, that is innocent, that is free from all diseases. Because I knew from the time I started fertility challenges, I, I began to have an abuse towards my body in my teen years. And I kept putting all my abuse on my body. And that's usually what happens with women is we put it on our body and usually it is our, our reproduction system because it is so powerful. It is our gut instinct. It is our intuition. And when that happens, my uterus was so deformed. It was so deformed and diseased that it could not give me life anymore. And so I had to let it go. And now I have this beautiful little boy. I got into the place of adoption, which was a closed door, another, another story for another time, but a closed door. And I learned how to open up that door. And I have a little boy who looks just like me and the most magical experience that I have ever experienced is this little boy and how he came to me. He's now four years old and he's growing up with energy medicine and knowing that he has that power within himself in order to shift his, if he has an illness, if he gets a boo-boo, if he gets something, he, he just puts his hands over the illness or the boo-boo and then he just psh, just throws it away and he can do this he, i've seen him do it with kids on the playground and he goes over and he goes and then throws it away it's the most amazing thing so i love that i'm i'm actually giving him his own power in order to know where his energy is and what is going on with him every every moment of the day and who he is so yeah <laughs> wow, what a powerful journey you've been on around that fertility and motherhood and and this yeah. amazing little little one who's in your life now yeah um, <laughs> Yeah, but yes, this is this is so incredibly important. And there are so many ways that the power seems to be taken out of our hands, right? Or the decisions seem to be taken out of our hands. And we really need to be very, very conscious about choosing our own bodies, what we know intuitively is right for our health. At this mm -hmm. time. It's mm -hmm. so, so important. So um, true. Yeah. So for listeners who are curious about how can I begin to feel energy or begin to work with this, you know, type of energy medicine? What do you recommend? How can we, how can we begin? How can we feel the energy? Yes. Well, it's the, it's the most easy thing. So energy medicine brings about simple tools and I am giving your listeners a gift um, in order to feel their own energy in my free gift. It is a self care daily routine that they can do touching into their own meridians. But as I said, 
we are electromagnetic beings. We affect one another uh, and we also can affect ourselves. Most easy thing to do with your hands is to clap them, rub them together and just feel the energy that you begin to pulse between your hands. It's the easiest thing when you begin to feel that energy, well, use that energy. And if you have a pain inside your body, well, put that, that, put your hands on that pain and give that intention towards your body. This is a place of self-love. You are bringing love back into your field. And so many of us do not have that kind of love relationship with our body as much. You can even bring in a color. Little kids can do this really Really, really easily and sometimes with our with the adults because we have so much in our world where we have belief systems we have responsibilities in life that sometimes maybe we can't feel it if you keep on really feeling that energy inside those hands feel as if there is a ball of energy put it on a place in your body this is what my mother did in order to heal up her legs, bring more circulation into her legs before she knew anything. That's what she did. And she began to form a beautiful healing and a relationship with her body so she could get out of her wheelchair before she even knew about the language of energy was this. So that's the simplest thing. But in my free gift, you'll be able to feel your meridians, which are energy pathways in your body. And every single one of the meridians I have in my free gift goes to a different organ within your body and it will fill up that organ with new spark new vitality and aliveness and i am sure that also a good thing to do is before you do my my daily routine is take note of where you are before the routine and then take note where you are afterwards and see if any Thing has changed within your body, especially if you're sick. It's a really good thing to do. You can do it in bed. You don't need to be standing up, but just little practices like this can really help you get to have an awareness of your own energy field and a relationship to your body. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you for offering that free gift to us. And I have put that in the chat here on Zoom. So everybody go ahead and be sure to grab that gift. Um, that is really, really powerful for all of us. And if you're watching this later as a recording, just scroll down a little bit below the video and you'll see the link to the free gift right there. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it's okay with you, Titania, I would love to ask if anybody in the audience has a question, if they wanna put a question in the chat um, and we can take a couple of questions before we close for today. So if anybody has a question, go ahead and share, just write it in the chat. And we will see it there. And we have so many beautiful comments here as well. Somebody was asking, actually here, somebody was asking, what is IVF? Oh, in vitro fertilization. And so it is um, injecting sperm into the body itself. And, um, and so it is when it's a fertility. Um, and I, I, because I had two near death experiences, one of the things that um, I guess I didn't say in that story was I was putting all my my tr trust and faith into my fertility doctor and one of the things i realized that she didn't do which actually i should have done because i know energy i know my body is she didn't regulate and balance my hormones and so i actually had a reaction and a, i od'd on estrogen and in that way, that, that's what caused me to have a um, this this illness, which is usually fatal, called hyperovulation syndrome, and uh, and that's when your eggs burst inside of you, and 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 it's because of um, unbalanced hormones, and so that that 
putting my faith into my fertility doctor and not working with what I knew of my own hormones and my balance. I just, I just said, Oh, please, please help me. I just want to get pregnant. And I let it go. I let go of my um, knowledge of what I knew. So it's so important to take your power back and work with your doctor. And also one of the things that I think is also um, when you go into the doctors, always have an advocate. You, if you are sick, you are vulnerable. You are in a paper gown. You, it, you sometimes don't ask the right questions, but when you have an advocate come in and help you understand what the doctor is, is, uh, is telling you and what is going on it's it's so important don't go in alone <laughs> yeah that's really really good advice um and we have another question here what can we do for our ovarian health i guess from an, an energy medicine perspective or from your perspective mm -hmm. One of the best things to do now on, on in your reproduction system, um, one of the best symbols, one of the best gestures you can do is to just create a figure eight. If you create a figure eight, putting your intention into your ovaries, both sides of your ovaries, putting in color and just bringing that figure eight around your womb and bringing in that amazing, amazing gesture. It helps everything. My mother says that when somebody doesn't have enough figure eights, now this is an old Celtic pattern, sometimes even a Norse pattern, and we have figure eights all throughout our whole body. It goes right down into the DNA. Our DNA strands is a figure eight. When she says there isn't enough figure eights in a person's body. She says, begin to make figure eights. Figure eights also cross over your body and also cross over the right and left hemispheres of your brain. But your ovaries are also, even like your kidneys in the back, kidney energy is also a really good thing to bring in um, more energy to your kidney and kidney energy. You can find that in energy medicine too. One of the best things for kidney energy, I'm gonna take my kitty off my lap. I'm gonna show you the bottom of my foot. <laughs> so sorry if it offends people. It's hard to bring up my foot in this small space. So I'm going to say, okay, if this is my foot, right underneath the ball of my foot, in the middle of my foot, is this place right here called kidney one. Other than figure eights, bringing figure eights into your energy field. Um, another one is bringing energy into the ball, underneath the ball of the foot. I actually saved my father's life when he was dead in my arms. He was about dead in about 90 seconds in my arms. And I pushed in on this point on his feet and he came back to life. And that's when the the, the ER came in and they said, how are you doing, Dr. Dolan? And he said, I'm doing great. And I said, no, you weren't. You were dead in my arms. Well, kidney one is the first energy that comes in through the baby's feet when they are born. And when you die, it also leaves. Kidney energy is what you need for uh, your ovaries, for the reproduction system. Kidney energy is a, your vital life force. It is called the wellspring of life in Chinese medicine. And this is so important. So if you just pulse the kidney one, or even get yourself a little bit of a, like a wooden knob. Sometimes this is really great. This is selenite. And sometimes putting selenite or a rock of your choice or a crystal of your choice on the bottoms of kidney one, it'll bring in energy and pump that right into your kidney, vitality energy into your field. And so um, that's a really good thing to do for your ovaries too. But you need kidney energy in order to get pregnant. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this. Huh? I know you shared a little bit about the the pandemic earlier. Is Was there anything else you wanted to say about that? It just, it's such a such an important catalyst for us at this time. 
It so is. It it so is. You know, before, so last week, if those are of you who are tuning in right now, last week I got COVID and I haven't actually been sick for the last five years or more. And I was wondering, oh my God, is it going to hit me? Am I going to get it? And, and it was a mild case. It was probably Omicron, then COVID. And it, passed through 48 hours. It was super, super intense. And I still have some of the symptoms today. And they say that it lasts for about two weeks, being tired, being being a little bit weaker in your system. And I have the energy medicine, even the gift that I'm going to give to you is a great gift for a daily routine to get yourself back on your energy pathways going in the right way after becoming sick. And so I I just began to work with this as I was getting sick and realized, oh my gosh, this is a little bit like an initiation. If we all went through and went into COVID in a different kind of spiritual way where it was an initiation to up-level our immune system, then that is amazing. When we up-level our immune system, then the planet gets up-leveled. We are in such a shift right now that I just really think that it is what we are stepping into is gaining more of this empowerment for ourselves. And yet at the same time, there is something that we need to do for ourselves. We can't just sit idly by. In 2020, I think so many of us in the quarantine started taking more supplements and um, and and really helping our bodies uh, become more healthy so we didn't get the virus. And I think that was also an up-leveling of our knowledge about, about our health and knowing that we need to be a, a partner within our own health. But now this this place of COVID, and I do, I bless all of those who have passed over. I think that in our day and age, um, we are living in a place, I call it the indigo age. And the indigo age is this place where a lot of polarities are coming about, um, polarities of the light and the dark, and this world and that world, and the masculine and the feminine, and this place of this world and that world, I think it's it's very much like what they say um, at, at Halloween time where the veil is thin. There are so many of us that are stepping into our empowerment right now, but also understanding that we are psychic, that we are intuitive, that we have much more power than we know. We are divine beings and that we are, having this relationship where we are bringing more love to this place of us being divine beings. We are working together in order to help the planet uplift. And whenever we heal ourselves, then places in the planet and the earth also get healed. And, and it goes from one person to the other person. So as many people that can really work with yourself as a partner in your health, then we begin to move and, um, and other people see that, oh my goodness, you have, you've been healed from a really debilitating illness. I want that. And it begins to work with other people and the whole planet begins to feel this energy that they have that power within themselves as well. Yes. I think it's, I think it is health is our greatest birthright. And if we can work with that, this is, this is how our planet is going to survive and energy Energy medicine is free. If we can understand what our bodies are telling us, that message, that our bodies are our teachers. And if we can listen to them, then, then we have the world in our hands and, and we can bring ourselves to a wholeness and a strength within our whole global community as well. 
And then we heal the planet. We heal the planet when we connect with nature herself, because nature is so much part of our, our healer as well. We need to connect with nature as well, because technology is going to keep on going. It's going to keep on going. And it is so important to keep on going because it is the, the connections between all of us all around the world, but nature itself, that's where we started. And that's, it will always be till the end of time, nature will be there. She is such a strong healer. One of the other things I'll, I'll give to your audience is a wonderful, uh, a wonderful kind of therapy that my mother gives to some of her students is when you are feeling so ill or maybe your your illness um your disease has gotten the better of you and and that's what i want to say to your your listeners too don't become a victim of your illness become a victor uh, find out why this illness has come to you there's always a reason and so this this particular therapy is if you could just go out into nature find a beautiful tree sit up against the tree feel the support of the tree and maybe feeling the ground underneath you and if there's wonderful grass is a really great thing to connect with take your hands and plug into the earth and when you plug into the earth begin to intently give over that illness back into the earth because the earth regenerates you and it regenerates that illness but it is an amazing a force field that happens with you and the earth. And so many times my mother has done this. We plug into the earth like an electrical system and the earth begins to give us energy that, that maybe we have been lost and disconnected from. And it is a wonderful healing that you can do with mother earth herself is just plug in and just intently give to the earth. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for that. I love that idea of plugging into the earth and letting her help us heal. Mm. Our body is connected to her, receiving all the good energy and ions yes. from her. And yeah, so good. <laughs> well, Titania, do you want to share with us any latest projects or books or creations that you're working on? We would love to know what you're up to. <laughs> You. It's very exciting. So one of the other things that I do in energy medicine is energy medicine with kids. I want every child to grow up with having an empowerment um, in their lives to know about their own energy and work with it and and help self-regulate their their moods so that when they don't get to their 30s and their 40s and their 50s they're not still dealing with the traumas of the past and so energy medicine with kids can really help children in so many ways so i have an online course that is I believe coming out in March, an online course for kids, energy medicine for kids coming out. And I'm so excited. That is with my mother's work, the EdenMethod.com. And so you could find out about when that's coming out to just get on her newsletter. You can get on my newsletter, energymedicinewoman.com and find out about anything that's coming up besides a few projects that I have, which is some of my energy medicine for kids book books finally being published and i'm so excited about this the first one is a small a board book for kids and it's all about chakras and and learning about their colors learning about their chakras and how they have these energy uh, places in their body that that uh, connect to different things in their life and step into their own empowerment with their chakras and i'm so excited about that book that's the first book coming out and then energy medicine for kids which is uh connecting with children and teachers and parents and helping in a uh, 
a way connect with the family unit and and giving over a hundred exercises in that book to help your children from anywhere from a nosebleed to a tummy ache to a, a high fever to a debilitating illness so that book is finally being pu published i'm so excited <laughs> That is that is so exciting. I'm so happy for you. Yeah. And I'm so happy for all of us and all the children that will <laughs> benefit from those books. Yeah, thank you for this yeah. beautiful work that you're doing and sharing. And so if people get your free gift, will they be on your newsletter list for updates about those things? I think they will. I okay. think they will. So that you're automatically um, on on my newsletter and you, you're very welcome to cancel at any time, but get the free gift and find out how it makes your body feel. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. It's that the daily routine is so powerful. And I'm sure you I'm sure this is even a more updated version than I've it seen. Is. So that's really <laughs> wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Well, Titania, this has been just such a pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you for all that you've shared. It's really inspiring. It's really deeply needed. And I, I can tell everybody in the audience is very moved by it. So just thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful, Jocelyn. I'm so grateful to be on your summit. I can't wait to hear all the rest of the speakers. I think it's a really powerful summit for our time. So I hope everybody goes and listens to the rest of the speakers. And and I bought the whole summit myself because I don't want to miss any part oh. of it. And I love that you are donating 50% to the Tree Sisters. Is that what it is? Exactly. Yes. Tree Ooh. Sisters. Yeah. Yes. Love In that. In support of life itself. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> One of my, yes, favorite, favorite causes to donate to and so yes. this is a wonderful way to bring together the funds for them mm. yeah well thank, thank you, you tanya and blessings i hope you keep feeling better and better um, thank you i will i will <laughs> and, uh, and i look forward to talking to you again someday all soon. right thank you yeah thank you and everybody who is here live thank you so much for being with us live on zoom and on youtube and for those watching this as a recording later know that you can access Titania's website link and her free gift link right below this video. So just scroll down and find those. And we have another amazing interview coming up in just a half an hour at 4 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have Peggy Moore on, and she is speaking about connecting with the earth through sacred geometric forms and stones. And it's going to be really, really powerful. Yes. Whenever Peggy speaks, it's amazing. So hope you all will come back and join Zoom and YouTube again then to hear Peggy's talk. Yes. And Lots of love, everybody. Many blessings. Mm -hmm. I will see you again at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. <laughs>